like to talk to you about basic hand sewing tools. This is an overview of the items that you should always have in your sewing kit. First up, we have needles. Needles are extremely important. They are what pull your thread through your fabric. So it's always great to have them on hand. I keep mine in a little needle jar. I have assorted sizes. I've got very long needles, very, very short needles. Um, it's really great to have them on hand for any project that you are going to do. Um, you can get packages of assorted sizes or you can get packages of specific length needles. The ones that I'm pulling out right now, these are going to be a very long needle and a very short needle. My short needle is going to be for stitches like slip stitches, very precise stitches where I'm only taking up one thread of fabric between each stitch. It's very precise. My longer needle is really great for running stitches. It's really good for basting. Um, it's going to catch a lot of thread on the, or a lot of fabric on the needle so I don't have to keep dipping back into my fabric. So those are my needles and it's great to have a variety. So next up is thread. Thread is extremely important. You want to buy the best quality thread that you can for your project. This is a Presencia thread. It is a 63, so 60 weight, three ply. Um, I love this cotton thread. It is my favorite to use. I'm gonna do another video on just thread, so now it's just an overview of what I use. Um, this is a Londonderry. It is an 80 weight two ply. Um, linen thread is a little bit different in weight class. I do not recommend using this in a sewing machine. I've tried using it um, and even just in the bobbin and it does not work, so I tried that out for you guys. Um, the flax is really slubby, so you can see where that flax fiber is coming together. Um, it's not really great to use in a sewing machine. This is just hand sewing. Um, I also have the same Londonderry thread, Londonderry linen thread in grayish or unbleached. This is a really, really popular thread um, in my projects. I use it all the time. I do also have the same brand linen thread, so Londonderry. This is a 100 Three. Again, the linen thread is kind of backward. Um, I will tell you guys all about that in that thread video. Um, I also have a spool of the white. This is a heavier weight thread that I use for wool items. Um, last but not least, I have my silk thread. This is a Guterman silk thread. I like it. Um, I think it looks very, very nice in my silk garments. Um, I like to use it when I baste. It doesn't leave a mark when you baste with silk thread. Um, it's also very, very strong. So I use that with my silk garments and when I am basting. So those are the threads that I use most often. Ah, the thimble. Um, I love my thimble. I've got two kinds here. Um, they're very, very important to me. My first one is a silicone thimble. It's going on my middle finger. I'm kind of miming here for you guys. Um, you, we don't want to put it on our thumb. We mostly want to use it on our middle finger. What it's doing is it's protecting our finger from the needle. So we actually use our middle finger to push our thread through our, or push our needle and thread through our fabric. And the thimble is just a buffer between our finger and the back of the needle. I've had to sew without a thimble and it is very, very painful. I do not recommend it. Um, buy, please buy a thimble. It's really, really worth it. Um, I do also have a tailor's thimble. This one usually goes on the pinky. It's the same thing. It pushes that needle through when you're using small needles. Um, my fingers are stick, so I just use it on my middle finger. Um, and it's going to provide the same protection um, for your finger. So it's really important to get a thimble. Next up are snips. They are small scissors to cut away any flyaway thread or thread ends. I like the ones that are spring-loaded. Um, they're just a really handy tool to have with you. Beeswax. I love beeswax. I have a little shaped piece here from Burnley and Trowbridge. I will link below. You can also find just generic little bricks of beeswax. Uh, what this does is this lubricates our thread. So what we do is we pass our thread through with some sort of lubrication. My personal favorite is beeswax. Um, and it prevents the thread from binding and knotting on itself as well as unraveling. So it gives you a really nice stiff piece 
piece of thread to work with. You don't have to cut out any tangled stitches. Whenever I sew, I will always, always use beeswax on my thread. Um, no, I will never not wax my thread. It's just something that I will always do. Aha, the seam ripper, the sewist's best friend. You always should have a seam ripper on you. Um, you should always get a quality, sh a sharp, high quality one with a little ball at the short end. You, it, uh, mine has a little, it collapses into a little pendant. I can put it on a chain, I love it. But you will always need a seam ripper. Um, it's your best friend, it really is. Last but not least, we have our marking tool. This is a friction pen, I love them. The pink shows up on both light fabric and dark fabric. Uh, and when you want it to disappear, you just iron it off. I would definitely wash it because if your fabric gets cold, it can reappear, but it is washable. Um, this is my clover chalk pen. I only use this as a chalk pen. Um, I do not have to sharpen it. I don't have to find a sharp edge. It will give me a perfect line of chalk each and every time. So this is the only chalk tool that I use personally. These items aren't necessary, but make sewing much easier. Pins. I didn't, it, I didn't include them in my basic tools and my, my necessary tools because I have gotten away without using pins. I've forgotten them before. Um, but I have them here on my Zirkle, my little magnetic pin holder. Um, I do have several different kinds. I've got glass head, plastic head, silk. So the yellow are my plastic head. I don't use them when I'm using an iron, just a pin based. My white are my glass head. I can iron with those. Um, and then I do also have some silk pins that I use for very delicate fabrics. My favorite pin brand is Boeing, and I will post below. I will link below. Um, I do also have my little thread, or my pin catcher. Um, I pin this onto my shirt when I'm sewing. I find that it's really tidy and neat, and it's easier for me to use than a little wrist pin holder. Um, so those are pins. A tape measure. A tape measure is very important to have on you. It is soft so it can move along the shapes of the body. I like to have a tape measure that is both in metric and American units of measure. Um, this one's retractable which is really nice uh, but it's a very important tool to have. A seam gauge makes life easy. Um, it is really great. It's got a sliding little marker. Um, you can create one inch, half inch, quarter inch seams um, very easily and it stays put. You can also use that little hole at the top to make perfect circles by dragging your pen around that little marker. So it's a really cool tool to have. Fabric scissors. Uh, they are not necessary for basic hand sewing, but you will want to eventually make that investment. You want a pair of nice fabric scissors that you use for only fabric. No paper, no trims, only fabric. These are beautiful bowing scissors. I will link them below. I love them. A pressing tool is next, um, especially if you're doing historical costuming or if you're doing small projects. This works instead of an iron. It will actually press a fold or crease into your fabric. Um, you can find them in wood, bone, but it's a very smooth tool that is very, very easy to use. Next step is my secret weapon, um, Wonder Clips. I adore Wonder Clips. I love them so much. They are great for bindings. They're great for hems. They give you a nice, even, narrow hem. Um, they even have a marking tool in the back. So you've got an eighth inch, you've got a quarter inch, you've got a half inch if you shove that fabric all the way up to the meeting point. Um, so right here, I'll show you. I've got that half inch seam. You will get a perfect half inch fold every time. I love them. Get some wonder clips, they're awesome. One tool I always miss whenever I don't have it is a narrow clear ruler, two inch by six inch. That is all you need. You can mark out darts, tucks, pleats, boning channels, anything with this. It's a really great tool to have. 
This tool is definitely not necessary. Um, pinking shears are kind of a little luxury to have, but I love having them. Pinking shears are great for creating trim. They're also really great for finishing the raw edges of your seam allowances. When you pink those edges, your fabric won't fray, so it's definitely an investment to make further on when you get sewing. I have found that twill tape is the duct tape of the sewing world. Um, it can act as a bias tape, it can act as a seam allowance um, finish, it can act as a shoulder support in your knit garments, um, waist tape, anything that you need, you, twill tape has you covered. So I always keep um, a few different widths, this is a half inch, I also have a whole, uh, full inch and quarter inch that I keep in my stock. hooks and eyes. These are a really great closure method. They're great for permanent and temporary closures if you don't want to put in buttons or zippers. Um, you can also put them in last minute, so on the drive over to an event, um, you'll always have a closure method on hand. They're really great to have as an emergency backup method, so I always keep them. Those are the basic hand sewing tools that I use and I love. And if you use something when you hand sew that I didn't mention in the video, please do comment below. If you'd like to see more videos on sewing tips, tricks, and techniques, make sure you click subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.